It's a bird! It's a plane! No, uh, that's Clark Kent. That's definitely him. He's not wearing his glasses, but why would, why would he think just wearing a three-piece suit and some glasses would make the most recognizable man on the planet a nobody? Huh. There's gotta be something else going on here. Maybe something evil? Why doesn't anyone recognize Superman? He is arguably one of the worst disguised heroes in history while simultaneously being one of the most visible. I mean, you're telling me a whole city can't tell the guy who destroyed it is the same dude who works at the Daily Planet? The comics actually had a few explanations for this. For example, in Superman issue 330, it's explained that Clark Kent has kryptonite lens glasses that he uses to focus hypno beams out on friends and colleagues. But I think this explanation is a little lame. Science can do way better than that. All the way back in 1883, French neurologist Jean-Martin Charcot described a patient who looked at his own reflection in the mirror and thought it was a stranger and he was in the stranger's way. In the ensuing years, we've discovered what to call this bizarre misunderstanding. When someone cannot identify or recognize human faces, they have something called prosopagnosia. Sometimes called face blindness, people with prosopagnosia are unable to recognize that the shapes that make up someone's face are actually a human face. They lack that higher order visual processing. People with prosopagnosia may not be able to identify faces, but they can still read and drive and even identify people based on how they sound and what they typically wear. And because prosopagnosiacs aren't hampered in a way that directly interferes with their lives, some might go an entire lifetime without a diagnosis. Noted neurologist Oliver Sacks didn't discover that he had face blindness until he was 52. Heck, Brad Pitt has face blindness and he's, he's doing all right. And how we test for face blindness shows how Superman's identity can stay secret. One test for face blindness lines up a few people of similar age, sex, and height, and also wearing the same clothes. They also wear hats if any one of them has recognizable hair. Now, among these near identical individuals is one friend or family member. If the patient cannot identify that person until they speak, that's a good indication that they may have prosopagnosia. Now, if Cal L's Clark Kent persona did always act and dress and sound the same way among his colleagues, if any one of them had prosopagnosia, they might not be able to identify him as Superman. Okay, so Superman's disguise would work if someone had face blindness. How does he make sure that happens? Prosopagnosia is very rare, affecting only 2.5% of the population. People can develop it in the womb or get it from something like a stroke. Either way, there is damage to the brain's fusiform gyrus, or the part of the brain that activates in response to faces. It's located under both hemispheres of your brain, right about here. Okay, okay, so here's what I'm suggesting. Either Superman is a super epidemiologist, meaning he found a super rare cluster of people to work with who all have face blindness, or he is using his powers for evil. He is using super speed to surreptitiously sneak up behind someone, x-ray their brain, and specifically lesion their fusiform gyrus so that they no longer recognize faces. It makes sense, you Kryptonian monster. Superman probably isn't some evil brain surgeon. He probably just has friends and colleagues that totally know that Clark Kent is Superman, but don't say anything because they're nice. I mean, if you woke up one day unable to recognize your own face in the mirror, you'd probably know something was up and you'd tell Batman so he could deal with it. Why? Because science. Wait, wait, who's that guy in the reflect? Oh, sorry, sir. After you. This video was based on an article I wrote for Slate about prosopagnosia. If you want more information, check out the show notes below and click through. Want more science? Check out my last video where I explain how Dragon Ball Z's time chamber might work. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos. If you want Because Science, two days earlier than anyone else, head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions or suggestions for future episodes, you can hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks. <laughs>